and I said this before, I feel like I should be applauding you. Because think about it, Erskine Bowles said that debt is a cancer facing our country, not because the Obama administration came to power thinking, oh my gosh, debt's a problem, but because the Tea Party people brought it to them. Because the people spoke, you spoke, and now the president happened to acknowledge that as appointed a commission, and they say that your issue is the issue that has to be addressed. I applaud you. it's so good that it's the Tea Party that's hosting this tonight. Because if you think about it, the spirit of the Tea Party movement is that a government derives its legitimacy from the consent of the governed. Now as it turns out, those that are governed are not stupid. They actually expect that if they're being governed, that there be a rational reason as to what the policy is about, a rational reason as to why we should agree with it, and we should be able to see somewhat apparently why it's good for our country that this policy is put in place. Well, I will say that the reason you're here and the objection of the Tea Party people is that the jobs mor moratorium and the, uh, the jobs moratorium instilled by this administration is not rational. It is not something that those that are governed give their consent to because it just doesn't make sense. Now. When I was running, I like to say that the wisdom of the American people, the wisdom of the people in the 6th Congressional District, what everybody in this room takes for granted, is brand new news in Washington, D.C. And, and you realize, oh, that's hyperbole. No! What you take for granted, like, oh, yeah, you know, renewable energy, windmills, uh, solar panels, they don't power automobiles. You know, that's electricity, that's not fuel. That's news in Washington, D.C. <laughs> if you bring that up in a committee meeting, you kind of see a light bulb go off. A light bulb undoubtedly powered by a windmill. <laughs> <laughs> and if you point out to people, as some of our speakers will, that there is statistically more oil spilled from tankers than there is from drilling. And that since I just read, where is it 82,000 barrels or gallons a day that we're going to be missing because of next year because of the absence of drilling? Oh, okay. 30,000 30, already. 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 Yeah. Barrels or gallons? Uh, barrels. 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 So that's 30,000 barrels a day already we're having to import extra, which means that we have that much greater risk. Now, those of us being governed, frankly, don't give our consent to that. Nor do we give consent to losing tens of thousands of good paying jobs. Now, I'm going to let my speakers go and I'll try and get us on, keep us on time, but I will give a, a Washington perspective. Uh, Secretary Salazar has uh, testified twice, uh, two or three times before, before Congress, sometimes in closed sessions, sometimes in open sessions. And I put the point to him, is 20,000 people losing their job irreparable economic harm? And he would not answer that question. He ducked and he weaved and he bobbed, but he wouldn't answer that question. And finally, the best he could do is that the theoretical harm of another spill that could happen outweighs the actual harm of tens of thousands of people losing their jobs. Now, that is not something that I think anyone in this room gives their consent to. It doesn't make sense. Um, uh, so I will tell you, the other perspective I have from Washington, D.C. is that they are going to stop drilling. They are going to stop it. They're going to stop it maybe only until the end of November, but it's not going to start before then. And even if Judge Feldman again points out that whatever the new moratorium is is arbitrary and capricious, they will appeal that, and they will appeal that, and then they'll put forth regulations which are so ill-defined that they can't be understood. And then they will be, you see where I'm going with that, that they will stop drilling until November the 30th. And somehow the fact that BP has set up a fund whereby you can come get a handout as opposed to having your job is supposed to make up for it. Now that is not the values of our state or our country great. Right? But nonetheless, this is supposed to be the substitute. And what can we what can we do? You know, at some point, you just have to have to look in the mirror. And that's why I'm so encouraged that it's the Tea Party people who are doing this. It is the Tea Party people that has Erskine Bowles, the head of the Death Commission. Hopefully the Tea Party people 
hopefully the Tea Party people can demand of this administration that they present a rational reason why they're doing this, why the actual irreparable harm of the loss of hundreds of uh, tens of thousands of jobs, um, why that's not actually worse than the theoretical harm of another student. Because at the end of the day, it'll be just like the debt. If this is turned over sooner or not later, it's going to be because of you. And I thank you so much for being involved with in it. I think Lindsey Graham has it wrong. <laughs> the Tea Party movement began in Boston Harbor, and it's continued, it's continued unstopped until today. And thank you very much for that.